Would you like to see a town being turned around from empty streets and empty buildings back to a nice place to visit? Or would you look forward to going shopping? I recently visited such a place and met someone who's helping to do just such a dream. Join me on episode two and meet her and find out how Sparta is making Georgia history today. And I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Karen West. And if you will, tell us what your job is with Dream Streets Sparta. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, sometimes I'm called the project manager. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm called the director. Sometimes I'm the general one. It just depends on what's being done. Um, I'm currently are working on about 40 different projects. Oh my goodness. Everything from things that are ongoing right now uh, mm-hmm. to things that are two months in the future, five years in the future, ten years in the future. So we've got some long-term plans. Um, we've got a lot of uh, short-term plans that we're working on. Uh-huh. Dream Street started as a project of the Sparta Hancock County Historical Preservation Commission. What happened was um, about 88% of the storefronts downtown were abandoned, were basically abandoned, not in use, um, were on, on the border of demolition by, by neglect. Um, mm-hmm. We now have about 12 buildings that are being worked on, Mm -hmm. um, are being brought back to life, getting ready for businesses. And a start of that was with the Historic Preservation Commission coming in and actively writing grants, Mm -hmm. supporting ordinances, working one-on-one with people. And the first project that uh, Deb Pilati, the chairman of the Preservation Commission, gave me was to do sketches of the buildings downtown and what they could be. Okay. So in order to do that, I first had to get some ideas. I've got a pretty fertile imagination, but the more people you involve, the more ideas you get, the better things are. Yep. So I interviewed about 350 people. Oh, my. From the ages of 2 to 92. And if you want to know the truth, you ask a child. Um, and what would they like to see downtown? What okay. kind of businesses they would support and mm-hmm. what building they'd like to see it in. Yes. Um, one of the overwhelming things was nobody stops in Sparta. Everybody uh-huh. speeds through. Yes. Um, they wanted restaurants. They wanted shops that they could spend money in. Uh, they wanted places their family could interact and play games, things for the children. Mm-hmm. So the first project we did was the Butterfly Walk. Okay. After we did, uh, Dip had asked me to do about 10 to 12 kind of building studies on what could be uh-huh. uh, I drew 38 okay. some of the responses from the 350 people and we had a wide range of things everything from uh, an Irish pub uh-huh. to a children's center to have birthdays and parties and events um, we had second hand stores we had uh, furniture and antique malls mm-hmm. we had restaurants of course of all different kinds we had just all kinds of wonderful ideas craft centers and art centers and places that people could gather on a regular basis a mm-hmm. coffee house so yeah kind of like central park in, in <laughs> france you know the center of the soap is in the sure sure uh, so even took one building and made it into what we call the beauty university because it had like uh, hairdressers and nail salons and uh, places where people could mentor to upcoming professionals. Okay. Now, does the town own these buildings? Does the town own these buildings or are they publicly uh, privately owned? They're privately held. Yes. The city of Sparta was laid out by land that was owned by um, a Revolutionary War hero. Mm-hmm. Um, and he took his own land and laid out the plan for Sparta in 1795. Wow. Sparta is much older than most people think. Yes. Um, we started up right after the Revolutionary War. And that's where kind of it got its name, was because we were wild west. We were Indian territory. <laughs> and the people of Sparta fought like Spartans. Okay. Came to protecting or taking the land. Okay. Basically. 
Yeah. And so that's where the name came from. And it was first addressed uh, by that name in a letter to it from George Washington talking about the military grounds, which is now where the leftover parts of the old female Academy. Okay. But the, the town was built to be, you know, this is a big, very big lumber area. The town was built out of lumber to begin with. Is that why there are so many lumber trucks going through town? Right, yes. <laughs> Definitely. Still um, doing, huh? There was one store uh, or one building on down right now. It's called It's a Plus, but it was the little stone building, and it was a wheelwright and a blacksmith. Okay. Everything else was pretty much built out of lumber. Yeah. We had a massive fire that went through um, in the late 1790s, early 1800s. Pretty much destroyed the town yeah. that we built. Um, then in the late 1880s, another massive fire came through and destroyed pretty much the entire town. Wow. So they rebuilt, and they rebuilt the ground. Uh-huh. And what's unique about the buildings down here, usually when you build a town, you have this, a common wall that serves the yes. We don't. Every building is encapsulated in its own wall system. So the walls between the buildings are double and triple. Right. And that's fire right. Sure, sure. Okay. But like this building here where you see the butterfly. Yeah. Um, that building originally was a livery state. Okay. Um, and where we have the butterfly, you can tell, was was actually an opening for the, the wagons and things to drive in. Okay. All right, I see, the, I see the knockout of it. Yeah, yeah. okay. So it gave a natural frame to the, to the mural. <laughs> also, uh, just down from that was the, it was, it was wood and got burned in one of the fires, but the first African-American church in okay. the city of Sparta uh-huh. was right next to that spot. Okay. And we have a mural plan for that building as well that's just been approved. Okay. So we're having to start that this summer. Uh-huh. Just to to kind of celebrate that okay. that little bit of history. Well, one of my questions I thought of is, you know, who designed this? Was it some famous? Ah, I'm gonna zoom in on that one. Says Bubba. <laughs> All right. Before we talk about Bubba, <laughs> Bubba. basically, um, I took the idea after talking with Raymond and Zach Reynolds, who own this building. Uh-huh. I took the basic idea to Valerie Alonda, and she is the uh, art. Uh, she came up with the final plan for this, uh-huh. and. Oh, then we laid it out. Yep. <laughs> we laid it out and started painting. And we invited uh, the community, everybody in the community. We had several days of, of painting. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we very tiny Okay. All over. They're, they're, you know, some of them might be in something colorful, some might, might be in a thing there. <laughs> but we had a lot of little ones, you know, two, mm-hmm. three, four year olds that weren't really comfortable with the paintbrush. Right. So we got them to stick their thumbs in their favorite color <laughs> and put them somewhere on the mirror. Oh, that's neat. And every time I go into Webster's, for an ice cream especially, <laughs> there, uh, there'll be a child in there. I mean, this was done several years ago now. Okay. And they'll come in. Miss Karen, let me show you where my thumbprint is. <laughs> they know exactly which thumbprint is there. Oh my right goodness. There. Um, so there's, no, there's a little living history. <laughs> also, Yes. We were going to leave this center uh-huh. empty so people could stand in it. Oh, yes. That was a part of the, the way we thought we could get people to stand. Oh, I get you to stand there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Very good. <laughs> Um, well, we know a wonderful curved artist um, that is from here, uh-huh. Smith. Okay. He actually worked on a lot of the murals and the artwork for the Olympics when it was in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. That's He's neat. done some beautiful, incredible work. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, he has Alzheimer's oh. now, so um, it's very sad to lose him. Yes. But he has moments where he comes back, <laughs> and if he was... Standing, you know, he came to some of the paintings and he says, I think you need.
need something there. And I think you need to name her Reaching for the Stars because that's <laughs> what you're doing. So I said, you know what, Mother? You paint the center, but you got to sign it. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's neat. So not only do we have local artists uh -huh. that are very talented, <laughs> but we have a world-renowned artist as well that has some major works out about the world that that's people wonderful. get to see. <laughs> and this was painted, uh, you say, a few years ago? Uh -huh. This was Actually done, yes. We we set the murals up so any and everybody can paint a section. Okay. I always have people say, Well, I'm not an artist, I can't do that. But this is Sparta. Yeah. And art is in the center of our <laughs> So everybody in Sparta is an artist. There you go. <laughs>